Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Cuts Clothing. Leslie, uh, appreciate you making the time to be on the podcast. Oh, thanks for inviting me, man. I really appreciate it. Um, we met earlier in the year, I think it was, and I saw some of your work on Instagram, your artwork. Really got my attention because I knew there was an interesting story to tell behind all that. You know, just the detail of it. I know you, you've done some great work, but just the detail of it and to hear your story when we first met from, you know, moving from Morata Settlement to Australia. I wanted to dig a bit deeper into that. I know we spoke earlier in the year about it, but you know, I'd love for us to have it on recording so we can you know, share it to either the rest of PNG or you know, others around the world and you know, see what we can uh, find from there. Oh, yeah, man, I'm so excited. Like, yeah, I'm happy to share... I'm excited to you know, yeah. get it out there. Man, I'm excited for the world to see your work. Oh. And I'll be sharing it on my Instagram, the, my platform, as much <laughs> as I can. So people, we can draw some more attention to that. Because uh, I wanted t- for you to be on here to give some hope to you know, people back home. Mm. And to, I know you're, you're creating a good life for yourself here now in Australia. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your plans now here in Australia moving forward? Oh, yeah. Um, I just graduated from a national law school. So at the moment, I'm thinking of... Um, like I got some other plans of doing my extra study or doing masters and stuff, but uh, like I just want to do some more exhibitions to put my work out there because uh, you have to reach as much as people. But like if you want to reach people, reach people out. And that's and, like, in the art world. The only thing is to go through like uh, doing exhibitions. Yeah. So uh, that's the point that I am at the moment. But yeah, uh, okay. that's what I want to do here at the, in the next few like months I had and yep. stuff, but yeah. That's awesome. And so whereabouts did you grow up in PNG? Oh, yes. Uh, I grew up uh, all my life uh, with my other four siblings. Uh, we grew up in uh, Morata, in the suburb of Morata. It's a really rough part of uh, Port Mosby. And uh, if anybody knows about Port Mosby, everybody, like anyone would know about Morata. Mm-hmm. But it's a really like... When you see from another perspective, it's so different. But as a someone who grew up there, it's home to me. Yeah, and and I really I, I really love the my friends I'm growing up with and every the people that I I knew. They everyone are like family to me. So it's a it's a thing about PNG that I like is everyone knows each other. Yeah, yeah. So in the settlement, when you're living in there, the perspective is very different inside mm-hmm. than when it is from the outside. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a completely different perspective because of, uh, you know, the way when you see it. Yeah. 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 Well, how do you think someone from outside of the settlement would see, the, w- what would their perspective be of that? It's always like the perspective is like it's a place where there's rock schools and... Mm. Where you know, there's trouble. Where there's always trouble and if you want to go there, like people, you're going to be careful because, oh yeah, you, if you go there, you're going to be robbed. Yeah. You can be, you know, so it's, it's it, it is a repetition of that, like, if if you see from the from like if if you live in other part of like Port Mosby or and towns and stuff like that, but it's a really uh, home of like really great people coming out of there. Even though it's a <laughs> yeah, it's a really you know low kind of a yeah, I would say like socioeconomic yeah. standard of living. Mm-hmm. But I think recently um it's yeah changing, so which is good to see. So, but there are, there's people living in the settlements; they want a better life. They're trying to create a good uh, living environment there. Uh, um, you're one of them, and you're saying there's many more in that community as well. Yes, they definitely they are like. Uh, um, the thing is, there some like uh, I'm so happy that you invited me to do this because uh, they they needed some inspiration or someone to, you know, so a light to them. Like there's always a way to go uh, to achieve like what you wanted to achieve, even though you can come from like you know probably yeah. not not so much hope there. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted to get you on here because, well, first of all, your work's pretty amazing in the in the art space, and I want to give a bit more hope to you know people living in the settlements because it's uh, it can be tough. Life can be tough. I, I never lived there amongst it. I grew up in the village in Tubus area. Mm-hmm. Life is a lot more simple and easier there, mm-hmm. I believe. And you know, there's there's tough places uh, to live everywhere and it's always relative to how you're growing up but yeah, I just want to get a bit more of your story so 
how did uh, the opportunity for you to come to Australia happen? It's a quite a story because uh, <laughs> coming to here, it's um, it's just like you as a child, you always dream of a, of a place or like, and you thought about them. But I mean, you when you look at the situation, like man, it's not gonna happen. Like, and that's a kind of thing. And and one thing is that as a as I what I knew as a kid is that. I want to travel. I want to see places, and I want to explore other cultures and stuff. Even though uh, I had this kind of ambition, and I wouldn't know that I will kind of get out of, and I will I can come out and you know, live in a place like here, and and it's it's really like a eye opening. But it's at the same time it's a it's cultural shock. But there's so much opportunity, yeah, like outside here than back home, and and that's the thing like. I felt like yeah, I was so blessed to come out here because of what I am good at, you know, creating art and paintings and stuff. And yeah, I think I I got discovered by um this lawyer back in Port Moresby. He kind of found what I did and stuff, and he yeah he commissioned me and stuff to do some work and to paint. I mean to paint some paintings and stuff. And while I was doing that, I kind of looking research into like get out for do some residency or something like that yeah and, and so we we you going to school at the I, time i was yeah i was actually um i was finishing my grade 12 in 2017 and after that um i was accepted to go to um to one of the university uh, in pau like uh, one of pacific advantage University back in pnz and th- that was in 2018 and i was supposed to go there but then I withdraw. I withdrew from the school because I just want to pursue my career as an artist. And I took this whole year off and just work as an artist. And while I do that, I got discovered, yeah. <laughs> and so you're working at, at home? I was working at home, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. leading up to that, were you always drawing? Yeah, I do kind of a... Drawing is... I, I do drawing since I was like, I was five or six, yeah. Because yeah. um, drawing, I've been always drawing because... I remember my first drawing was of my grandfather and it was so beautiful that everyone sees it and they were, they were so shocked because uh, the painting, it's, I mean, the drawing looks like him. Yeah. Yeah, but I actually destroyed a pet drawing because I told my dad, hey, you know, as a kid, you know, I don't know much about, you know, keeping my work and stuff, but I told my dad to print it. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't and then I was like, Nah, I'm bending it off. Oh yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it wasn't good enough, or it was you, so good. You, no, drawing the drawing is so good, yeah. but I don't know, like, I well, why I destroy it is just for well, like printing it. And yeah, I, yeah, it's yeah. So I was, you know, uh, that was when I was six or five or something. So yeah, yeah but I can still remember that. But I uh, drawing is part of myself. I would say growing up is I becoming fun to draw, even though I'm I got so many interests in other things. Like yeah. Like everything I got interested in, but drawing and art has always been my drive. Like I, I, I'm one of those kids where in school where people are like, oh, artist. Yeah. If you want to draw, <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to Yeah, one. I remember those yeah. kids in school. <laughs> yeah, That's so probably the kids I got the <laughs> uh, strongest memory of in school. Yeah. Uh, you know, grade one to six in the village. Uh-huh. Kids that could draw, you know, I couldn't draw a triangle, yeah. you know. <laughs> But yeah, so you were, so you found that out. You were pretty good at a young age, and then up until yeah. high school when you graduated, then you took a year in just doing artwork. Yes. And then how did you get? What was the moment like when you got discovered? It was uh, kind of a like uh, what, what would you say? Like I, the thing is that because one thing about the culture in PNG, like not culture in PNG, but you know the pe- if you know thing about the family in PNGs, like. Always your parents and uh, like you, they have uh, your family or your members and stuff. They have high expectations of you to achieve something. Mm-hmm. And you, if you choose stuff, you have to think, you know, think pretty much like not of only your family only, but of your tribesmen and your village and yeah. <laughs> your clan and everybody. So like, like if someone goes to university, it's like it's a big deal. So yeah. like everyone celebrates and it's it's like a kill pig for you, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a big thing and. In the family, not many people go to universities. So when I saw my name, I I was so happy. Like I, like my family was so happy, but in me, I wasn't so happy at all. Like I was like, eh, good. Yeah, to get into uni. <laughs> yeah, get into uni. Yeah. Like I was like, eh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, that's, that's it. But 
the thing too when I choose art and like I I when I withdraw from the school like they were they wasn't so happy with like my decision at first mm-hmm. especially even some of my brothers do like they wasn't so happy but on the way I proved them and when I got discovered and stuff and um when I started to make some money doing exhibitions and painting commissions and doing those things I started to earn something in one year I I actually make a good like you know impression <laughs> to yeah. my to my family and they were like oh well and so how uh, how are you making your income just on the street uh, selling the art or um really like uh, I used to the thing is that I used to sell art on the street like when I was actually when I was back in primary school oh okay so you've been doing so it for I a while so I've been doing it for a while I've been doing painting for like since I was like 14 13 yeah and but when to I actually getting an income from getting that getting an income from that I I I've been so like self subsidy for so long like in like i wasn't relying much on my family like if i yeah. want to go to watch a movie i just sell my art <laughs> and go to the cinema and like doing things like that or even if i want to buy my things that i like like i just yeah i do sell stuff for like five kina, yeah that know. is awesome yeah. and then yeah it started to increase over time yeah but yeah at the and it was very young when i do those things but yeah as i grew up i started to realize how value my heart is and how i can uh if i create a piece it's it's more than just a piece to be put on the street and to sell it i wanted it to be to be presented in a way that it it, it is it suited its quality yeah so i i started to put it in like in exhibitions if there's exhibitions or so so in when they organize some events and stuff i just i put it out there too and you know and then yeah i i i make some good box from yeah, that yeah then so, I, but the, yeah. the income was enough for you to live off and yeah to live off for me to help provide for the family as well yeah it, it, it is it is and it's i do some save up and stuff on my way and and i try to save as much as i can or whatever because the thing is that i wanted to s- go to like art university it's college it's like so it's my dream mm-hmm. it's to go to like art college and do some and and so i applied to few few courses uh, like colleges up um, like around the world and stuff i just like apply not in png i say <laughs> like there's national art school in png but i'm like no nah, i'm i'm looking to explore the I world i want to explore the world so yeah. i actually applied for to as many university but i wasn't thinking about australia i applied to like uh, schools in paris and then in, uh, in in italy someplace like spain and stuff and i just applied to all this while i was working in with this um i was working with uh, Greg Shepard, which is uh, as uh, yeah uh, i do this commission and stuff eh, while yep. i was there and w- when i was working there uh i i got accepted in in florence academy of art and i was like oh well okay <laughs> so man florence italy come on let's go <laughs> <laughs> so i i saved up i saved up i just saved up as much as i can and i the thing is that man, this is where i'm gonna go and then i, I when i do that i also apply to few um Few few art residency like art events and stuff like, yeah and and it wasn't like because it's a it's a long way from home and and I didn't know that if I can make it there or something I don't know but I I just got this faith that I can get there if I push a little bit longer so I I did it I and then I got accepted in um um in one of the residency in Paris so I was on my way. To Australia, they, because if you want to go to uh, Europe, you have to come here, get your visa here. I do your visa here, and so then you gotta get it all done in Australia, and then, and go, then to go, go to Europe. Yeah. yeah. And while I was on on my way here, there was there was a uh, 2018 was oh, so that was in 2019. I uh, saw 2018 by end of 2018. I first time ever <laughs> flew to <laughs> flew out of the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. What was that like when you landed in the? Was it Brisbane Airport or Sydney? It was in Sydney. Yeah. First place in. in <laughs> what was your initial was, reaction when you walked uh, off the plane? Oh uh, man! Like coming out, it's like, it's complete. It, it's so big. Everything is big. Yeah. Uh, the airport. Uh, it's like coming out of there. Like shit. Where's where's it? I just follow the crowd, <laughs> <laughs> and there was no one there, you know, to pick you up or whatever. Like it just myself getting out of the plane first yeah. time go down i went to the i was like where's the taxi yeah. <laughs> so it's like try to find, figure out stuff and yeah somehow yeah and then i ended up in uh, so did, you, did was there yeah. plans was someone gonna wait for you in, in sydney or did you just turn up 
I just stand up, yeah. Yeah. No one that I know. We, we, was it somewhere for you to stay? Uh, yeah, there's a place, uh, like, I, I, I got this up two days. So you weren't just days. coming here just to yeah. stay on the street and no. do your visas? Yeah, no, actually, it was you, like, you no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the place that I was staying for is for only two two days. Yeah. So uh, the next few days I was in backpackers. Yeah. <laughs> just putting my back, pulling it over the street, and, yeah, but I was just doing my visa and stuff. But, yeah, I luckily, like, I just put it on my Facebook. I hey, I'm in Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> I just that, and then some of my friends just came and picked me up and take me like overnight to see some place in like opera. I was like, Whoa, "Yeah, man, it's crazy." And Unreal. then, so, so your friends saw your Facebook post came. <laughs> yeah, it came. And, and yeah, they're my Facebook friends. Like they just yeah. when they saw it, like they came and picked me up and like, "Hey, what an adventurer!" Yeah, hey. it is. It is. Yeah, man. going straight into the well, not jungle, but you know, yeah, from a bit of unknown and yeah, to the concrete city, man. Like yeah. it's crazy. What a good example for you know kids back home. Just to follow their dreams, whatever it is, um, even though the people closest to you may not see a future in it, you saw it yourself. Mm. And you know, I wouldn't say similar for me because I had a lot of support in terms of family driving me to footy training. Mm. Uh, my mum, who was my auntie at the time, um, I called her my mum because she looked after me. She would drive me to cricket training, uh, footy training. So she always had that. You know, I don't know if she had the belief that I'd make it to top grade but she wanted to make sure that I had education first uh, make sure I studied in high school make sure I get my HSC scores up which I didn't really um, I was more interested in sport but you know she always supported me but for you it's uh, slightly different because you're doing something that not many people see as a uh, I guess career mm. and so for you to push through that and continue and then you know end up here where today you're revealing one of your paintings. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about that and what's uh, happening today? Yeah. Um, today um, I'm here in Brisbane to uh, do a reveal of a portrait I did um, like a few months ago. And it's of a, a QUD uh, elder in residency. He, uh, he, looks after, he looks after the Aboriginal community and in the, in the campus. So the land in, uh, in, in the, the river, the Brisbane River is his land and stuff. And, yeah, he is like one of the first Aboriginals to go out to be educated and like to 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 pursue things. That, I mean, to give hope to other you know Aboriginal like mm -hmm. communities. And so um, I was uh, given this like kind of it's, a, it's quite a big honor to that you know they recommend me to paint to be in one of their portrait gallery. So it, it's like it's actually one of my biggest I would say my biggest. Uh, Commission, not in a way that commission, but it's like a, it's a dream that I wanted to do something like that, which is to do something, to do paintings where it's, it's prominent, I like it, it yeah. and, and meant something. And meaning, meaningful, meaningful to meaningful. someone, yeah. Yes, so, uh, and I was, uh, yeah, so thankful to be uh, given this opportunity to paint him. So today um, I, I'll, I'm here to be, to reveal the painting. So I don't know. There'll be like fifty guests or something like that. And how many people have seen it so far? Um, uh, what I know is that the chancellor and uh, a few curators have seen it. Yeah. So no, no, yeah, no one has seen it yet. So yeah. it's gonna be a like a big reveal where just go open it up and and uh, open the cat and oh yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, what's the name of the person you you're revealing um, today? Uh, his name is uh, Gre uh, Gregory Hebert. Red, but they call him like Uncle Chag yeah. in the in the campus. Yeah, so he's a legend in his way. So I'm I'm so excited to uh, like you know set up so in the painting today, and I'm also a bit nervous because <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, nervous. What are you nervous for? Like I mean, you gotta give a five minute speech. <laughs> like, oh yeah, are you prepared so, for it? I mean, I, it's gonna come naturally. Well, you know, prepared, you're talking for one hour today, <laughs> so you five minute speech oh, yeah. today will be nothing for you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do today. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited for. Uh, yeah, to are you are you nervous for his reaction too? Or I yeah. am so nervous on his reaction. Honestly, like if I'm, I'm, I'm like there's some other people who see it and stuff, and they're happy. But the thing is that the someone that you're painting, their reaction, they're happy, <laughs> and you, then you've done your job. <laughs> so if not, like that's that's the big um like um. I, I am a bit, I'm nervous for that. Yeah. It's Have you ever had one where it's got kind of gone the opposite way that you thought? 
many times. Every <laughs> many times <laughs> that, <laughs> that I have to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, does I hate does it. it motivate you or do you go? It, oh. It's not motivating me at all. <laughs> like, no way. No, no, no way. Bro, like, it's not motivating when, like, when you do something and, and uh, like, and it's taking you months, taking you months, and it can take you like longer than that. Like, it's, it's, it just sometimes yeah, you, it drains out all of your inspiration and like, yeah, you just don't <laughs> want to paint at all. Yeah. How, how do you react to the? Uh, how do you respond? Because that's a challenge in itself, and mm -hmm. when it when it's not motivating you, you know, how do you get up for it to keep going? Yeah, uh, sometimes, oh, bro, like, so I just destroy it. The thing is that, <laughs> yeah, I destroy it. No, it's kidding. I just destroy all. You feel good off. from destroying it? Yeah, just destroying it. I I I, I tried to let go of it, but luckily one of my friend helped me. Helps me out in a way to, to like if you have any like, if you have this energy where you hate something, just destroy it. So <laughs> I I my first painting that I did it was you know, some one uh, some few years ago is that I destroyed the painting that I did so good, but I destroyed it, and along the line like I. You know, trying to do that. Like, if do, it, do you I, ever think it, like destroy it, you destroyed it, but maybe to someone it's worth like maybe that twenty grand. And that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know you it, just destroyed twenty just, grand right there. That's right. It's on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> on the spot. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 Actually, that's how you deal with it. You, you just go and destroy it and then restart. Yeah. Then restart from the scrap. Like that painting that I'm I will reveal today. Uh, I I painted it like four times, and. Jeez, I hope I, he likes it. Yeah. I hope he likes it. I know. <laughs> like far out. The painting took me four months and I painted it four times on the same canvas and I repainted it again, again, again. And, and the last one, the one that I was happy with, I only did that in three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, that's how crazy that is. Yeah. Because I mean, it, it's it's only three weeks, but it still took you mm -hmm. a lot of months to get to that point. Yeah, to get to the point. That's the, you know, that's the idea of painting is always. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I really like do my own stuff instead of publishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, you know, I hope, uh, and I know you do well today, and yeah. I'm sure he'll be very happy with it. And uh, hopefully, you don't have to destroy it because yeah. sort of months of work in that. No, I'm not, uh, this one, yeah, I'm so happy. Because uh, it's gonna be. Good. <laughs> we took photos of uh, me yesterday. I know oh, you're yeah. gonna do a painting of me uh, mm. sometime next year. So, you know, I would like to see the if you take a photo of the one you destroyed, can you take uh -huh. a photo of it, send it to me before you destroy will, it? I'll if you do. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see all yeah. the things. <laughs> um, but I, I'm excited to see that. You know, the work that you're doing, it's it's awesome. Uh, you know, your Instagram tag, I'll make sure I put it on the podcast notes um, and on my Instagram, Facebook as well. Hey, guys, just going to take a quick break from this episode. I want to mention Cuts Clothing. They've been a sponsor of mine for a couple of months now and now they're sponsoring the episode. So I just want to talk a little bit about them. So these guys make elite apparel for the modern professional. As you can see, I've got the polo on, the cap. I enjoy wearing them every day and I like to put myself in that modern professional category. And so every cut shirt is designed to provide a perfectly tailored fit. Plus Cuts has all the essentials for looking sharp like tees, polos, caps, hoodies, and more, so you can look and feel good no matter what the occasion is. Now, I wouldn't say I know too much about fashion, but one thing I do know is that Cuts have mastered the art and science of perfecting the men's tees. I wear these shirts for meetings, podcasting, catching up with friends at a cafe or a restaurant, or just when I'm at home spending time with my family. And because you guys are mindset listeners, Cuts have allowed me to give you guys 15% off your total order. Head to cutsclothing.com that's c-u-t-s clothing.com and enter David Mead 15 at checkout all right let's get back into the episode the, the type of painting you do is it, um uh what kind of painting would you call it yeah, they call it like hyper realism hyper, hyper realism hyper realism but it's a i kind of call it like emotive realism where it's mostly because you can see some brush strokes you can see some like some yeah, stuff. You know, like it doesn't seem like like if, when you get closer, you will see that it's a painting. Yeah, and yeah, I I, I like to keep it a way where you know you feel you can feel that it's a painting. It's not yeah. a photograph. Yeah, but some 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 hyper realism. It's like photo. You can't tell that it's a painting at all. It looks so much like photo. Yeah. Yeah, I guess everyone's got different interests in that yeah, space, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, yeah. So it's pretty competitive uh, world, I'd imagine. 
the art world is so competitive. That's why uh, like you have to make your way up. You build your portfolio slowly. Do a lot of exhibitions and yeah, is that where you, is that where like the top artists kind of make it? The the yeah. more exhibitions they do. Yeah, it's the more like more you put yourself out there and you you sow your development in, in what you're doing, but all the same time what you what your heart speak about. So like for myself, you know, I speak most of my works is all of like you know I paint uh, the faces of like the face the lost faces I say because the faces started to fade away like I paint up. Uh, I like hyperrealism of like indigenous uh, uh, Papua New Guinea and mm-hmm. the culture because I I felt like it's so unique and different than I felt like I that's what I felt like it's my voice and it's so different from I see so many works like over time and 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 I felt like there's so much potential in you know in art world in to to so. Uh, you know, like our culture and stuff like that. So that's what I do. Like I, t- I try to keep this face fragmented forever. Yeah. Uh, because there's some years time where, you know, I, it could be it it could worth uh, seeing or it can it can worth something um, of people, uh, yeah. especially younger generation. They might turn back to it and try to, uh, it meant something for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, so. that's awesome, mate. Because. I guess you know you're trying to play your part in showcasing PNG to the world because there's a lot of potential there, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of hope that you know can be helped mm-hmm. to progress. To any kids out there who are listening who love what they do but probably think it's what is probably not going to support me or my family, is there any advice you have for them back home? Like if you were to go back home, what would you say to them? Yeah, I would say like. My advice to like to young kids who, are, who pursue their dreams or they wanted to, like they have some talents that they want to show, but you know the industry is not it's it's weak and like, and you compare your situation and 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 that's the thing you know uh, there's no support from family or like because and you see that there's no way to go up there. Mm-hmm. It's I, I believe that like one thing is to just persistence on what you're doing, and as a kid like if you're any kid out there who listen to like. Just be be patient in what you do and try it, uh, like you just. But one thing is that don't think about your area that you live, but your mind is like just put it out there. Mm-hmm. I guess, um, for myself, like even though as a kid, I've I've seen a lot of like art from like Renaissance period, and appropriate all these paintings. Like I do do the same paintings. I just like I I paint them, and you know, then even though we got the hard world in PNG, but I do not based on my work on like the concepts what someone have done before but my mind was somewhere like i'm thinking of a heart in euro center like art in like europe and 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 that's what that I, you know kept me away from like from society like it it become in my escape i create art to escape reality like you know it, but it's because of that kind of motivation or because of that kind of uh, thought where you just you put your mind in like in a different uh, world, I would say, like a different context of where you are, then I believe that over time, you, you, because you develop yourself, it's your, the, the nature where you uh, right now will, it, 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 it will not suit at you. Yeah. So it's somehow going to push you out there because you have, your mind is focused on somewhere over. So it's naturally it will happen. And that's what I felt like, because I think I'm, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's like you manifested the manifested whole thing. Manifested the whole thing, yeah. yeah. It's just like when you do overtime and you just, you know, constant, uh, constantly doing it, and yeah, and then that's that would be my advice. It's like yeah. whatever field you are in, I um, can, I, I can definitely relate to that. Yeah, uh, it's, and it's great advice for kids staying patient and you know, picturing where you want to go because mm. it'll draw you closer. I remember as a kid in the village, you know, and you mentioned something about support from family. Mm-hmm. Your family does want to support you, but they've got their idea of what you should do mm-hmm. rather than your own idea. That's what you're going to be mm-hmm. battling against most of the time. Mm-hmm. I remember as a kid growing up in the village, and I used to watch NRL games, and the guys would be running the ball, and I'd like I'd pretend I had the ball, and I'd you know sitting on the <laughs> on the floor, I'd pretend I'm getting the ball and running past someone, like imitating them a bit. Yeah. Um, and then I it got to a point where I was like, man, you know what? I want to play that sport one uh, that game one day, and then like. Uh, my older brother is kind of like, yeah, Rory or Dave, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, just you know, in a loving way, not in a, 
I'm going to crush your dreams kind of way, but those little things can, you know, play a part. But I think that's in terms of family support, we can be a lot better as a culture like that because mm. everyone's got their idea of success as, you know, you got to go to uni, study, um, be a doctor, lawyer, accountant, whatever. But there are many other opportunities presenting themselves now through social media, uh, internet that you can create career out of, you know? Honestly, yeah. And whatever the kids, kids, if you've got some talent out there, my advice is go on social media but don't consume so much. Watch and learn uh, what others are doing but don't be so consumed in the social media world. That's kind of a place where you can put up, uh, create your brand Put out your store so you can invite people to come buy things. And with that comes a lot of responsibility. Uh, you got to behave in a certain way in the social media world because it's there forever. And sometimes if you're, you're trying to create a brand and then, you know, you write things on there or you say things on there, people can come back and, especially jobs and stuff that you're looking for, they can come back and look at your social media account and see whether you're suitable for the job. So a lot of those things you have to consider. But... Social media will create an opportunity for many Papua New Guineans uh, across the country, whether you're from you know, the settlement area or you know, in the city, in the village. There's a lot of opportunity there and you can follow your dreams. You don't have to follow the normal path that's been created for the past generations. Um, so yeah, that would be my advice for the kids. What are your hopes and aspirations for the future? I know you said you're kind of living the dream now. Is there anything that you have in the future you want to achieve? Oh yeah, um, my hopes and dream is is one day to to have a gallery somewhere, anywhere overseas or back home, suited back home. But then you have in a like an exhibition like overseas and stuff, and just wanted to create more work, and and wanted to get my message out there, and then I want to inspire a lot of like kids as possible and and yeah to to give back to the community back home on um, but yeah at the moment i'm still uh feeling that i'm i'm still learning to learning myself and my capability and try to stretch as wide as i can and, yeah and yeah and yeah trying to reach out there still still i'm um, dreaming at there so. what, what does a normal day look like for you now like in terms of like your art, artwork yeah um most of my time, well, in the morning I, I didn't do much. Most of my time I just spent in my studio, yeah. just do sketches, a little bit of sketches and stuff. And sometimes I do those checklist things like that. Yeah. But then most of my time I just sit and paint. Yeah. And so you're just painting I'm all day. Just painting all day and yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's quite you know you thought it's it's lonely, but not really. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, you know, I think if you're if if you can be alone in your own company, uh, then you're in good company, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you're sitting there and you're bored, mm-hmm. and then you're probably not in good company. company. That's right. Yeah. So you got to change the story in your head. Yeah. Um, is there any favorite paintings of yours? Is there like a top three, top five? Oh yeah, there definitely it is. Number one will be gaze. Will be gaze. It's like a painting that I did. I did in one week, but it's pretty much one of my masterpieces ever. And I try to, if I want to recreate the same same kind of uh, the moment when I have when I painted, I still can't. So it's one of my best pieces ever. I would say that's my number one. And two will be Golden Man. And I think three will be. Um, Maria's Bright Price. It's yeah. one of my earliest work. Maria's Bright Price. Maria's Bright Price. Is I there was a story behind that? Yeah, it's um, it's of my grandmother because uh, I was look after her I, I, for one year in my village and stuff. So it's, it was kind of a real big uh, inspiration to me and and to know about the story where her, my grandfather, when when he wanted to to get her, yeah, and <laughs> and to. To compete in a soccer to win it. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's crazy. Like in PNG soccer, man. It's yeah. like something about you know how to mix like two different culture, like and traditional, and then talk about some culture like a Western culture to bring both together to create this family. Like yeah. wow, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but she didn't like it. So that's a thing. 
Yeah. Chilling like I said, I cannot. But to win, winner is like true competition. Yeah, it's true. Crazy, yeah. I guess that's, the, that's probably anywhere like, in the world, really. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's competing for. Competing, yeah. Yeah. It's great. Uh, women, so. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's. Your grandfather was, was uh, soccer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's. You know, I was talking to Justin Olam mm-hmm. uh, not last year. Do you know Juzzy? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Jazzy was telling me you know, stories about Bride Price mm-hmm. back home where he grew up. And there's a Bride Price is pretty big in PNG. In my village, it's still gone, but it's a, it's a lot more mm. monetary based mm-hmm. um, rather than the old traditional ways of mm. exchange. And I guess it's always going to change over time. Back where you're from, is there, is there any similarities in that Bride Price space oh, to yeah. what, what Jazzy's or, you know? It's the same. It's the same. Like, you have to, like, together you, you have to like an exchange of pigs and you know but uh, this thing where before there's a bride prize is like a family of women gonna give give something little to a, to a guy's family yeah and then they will be like this is our demand now so you're gonna come with like 10 times or <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you gotta you know you're gonna so that's where like so it's an exchange for it's an exchange for, yeah. for the bride yeah for the bride yeah. so it's like yeah. interesting concept eh? it's, uh Countrywide, I mean, it's 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 across like many different Pacific Island countries as well. But mm. yeah, I've always found it pretty interesting that bride price space. I'm we're getting towards the end of the podcast, so we won't go into that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as we get to the end, towards the end, uh, Leslie, uh, there are a few rapid fire questions. What's your favorite food? Uh, pizza. Cho- pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a favorite quote or saying that you live by? Oh yeah, live. live. Like enjoy every day by day. Yeah. Is there a favorite artist uh, in terms of music and drawing artist? Um, I've, I've listened to so many music and stuff. Yeah, yeah. not one in particular. Not one in particular, yeah. honestly. Yeah. And in terms of painting, art? painting, um, I I draw myself to so many like different uh, kind of artists and stuff. But uh, I I kind of like uh, at the moment I I like the artist of Micro Grassi and. Detail and stuff is so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. If you were an animal, mm-hmm. what kind of animal would you be, and why? Uh, I will definitely gonna be a crocodile. I don't know why I say that. <laughs> I always say that. <laughs> <laughs> if my mates is, is they'll laugh because I say that uh, again. So is there a reason behind that? I don't know because they just they, they're creepy sometimes. Uh. <laughs> 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 they're just like I didn't know what are you can see. <laughs> just always hiding one of their business, but yeah. when the prey comes along, yeah, prey comes along, let's try it. Take yeah. it, yeah. yeah that's not a bad thing. Yeah. That's not bad. I, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy each day, every day, just relax and then yeah. then go after it when the prey presents right. itself. <laughs> um, strike when the time's to strike. If there's three people you'd invite to a dinner, who would they be? Is it going to be like uh, someone where it can be imagination or... Imagination, real, real? or not real? This okay. will be interesting. I, w- I will bring back uh, <coughs> Michelangelo and yeah, Vincent Van Gogh, of course. Vincent Van Gogh? Van Gogh. And, yeah. uh, and then um, then from the 20th century, it would be, okay, uh, Damien East. Yeah. And I just want to see them talking and I want to see the time changes, and and then they will ask each other like, "Hey, the man will be like, why? Are, like Michelangelo done so much, so intriguing work, and yeah, how the heart changes. I want like they will contradict each other in a way. Like I want to see like what are their perspectives of changes over time, you know. And yeah. So I want to learn from them. And they're all from different times. Different times from the fourteen hundred, yeah. from the eighteen hundred, and from. Well, we, so you'd like to century. bring them all together. Bring them all together and get their perspectives. Have their perspectives on. Like how they want to contradict each other, like how they are. Yeah, that's an interesting way to put it, eh? Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't know nothing about the art world, but those names are familiar because we had to study them in school. <laughs> uh, Leslie, thank you so much for you know making the time to be here today. I know you've got plans for the rest of the day. I uh, really appreciate it. I wish you all the best for the reveal thank and you. getting that great reaction that I'm sure you'll be waiting for. And all the best with your five minute speech. I'm sure you'll conquer it like nothing. Is there is there any th- is there any message you have for you know Papua New Guineans out there, maybe kids out there for for them to continue to aspire to oh, okay. take part in the art art world? Oh yeah, um, just uh, 
Yeah, I would say I just keep on uh keep on doing what you love doing. And yeah, the world is crazy out there. But yeah, but keep hold on to what you uh good at and and see yourself as someone. Don't you underestimate your potential as a human being. Life is once and you have one try. So yeah, do it as best as you can as you can. Because you can't live a second life. <laughs> that is awesome. Enjoy it. <laughs> awesome. Leslie, I really appreciate your time today. And I love what you finished off with. One thing I'm going to take out of today is, you know, you're, you're living in the village as a kid, but you're, put, uh, you're putting your brain overseas, you know, your mind overseas. And, you know, you're drawing those places closer to yourself. You're certainly a, an example of that. Uh, I appreciate you sharing that today. And, you know, that's the key message I'll take away from you. So. Thank you very much and uh, I look forward to the finished product of the uh, painting. Oh man, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thanks, awesome, brother. Man. Thank Thanks you. Thanks, brother.